Hello all. Today I'm going to start on a new video series related to education. So this video series is aimed at Pearson Edexcel International A level, also known as in short Pearson Edexcel IAL. So this is the first video of that series and as you can see on the screen the question being asked is what's UCI? This UCI sounds very strange and alien to those who are not familiar with Edexcel International Alien. However, if you are a student who is doing the Edexcel International Alien, this is a very important aspect of the examination. First of all, let's have a look what this UCI number stands for. That's very important, right? So let's get started. U stands for unique. C for candidate. I for identifier. So UCI stands for unique candidate identifier. As you can see, the name suggests that this is a number given to each and every candidate in order to identify them uniquely. Remember, every candidate is unique. So exam board needs a way of identifying exactly who you are. I know that would be possible with your name or even your identification number such as NIC number or passport number but that is very complicated and cumbersome when there are hundreds and thousands of students involved. Therefore, they have introduced this unique candidate identifier in order to identify you rather easily in a very methodical way. So what's UCI? It's the unique candidate identifier. Let's go and have a look. What does it look like? What does it contain? That's the question, right? The UCI is a 13 digit. That's a long number. Alpha numeric number. It has numbers and English letters. This UCI number has 11 numbers and 2 English letters placed in very unique positions. Let's go and have a look. What does it look like? This is an example. You can see the number is given as the UCI number in this example 977000B181001A. What does it really include in this Lucia number? Why does it have to be so long? I'm sure you are wondering. Why can't it be a small 3-4 letter number? Remember, there are hundreds and thousands of students taking this examination. So the exam board needs a very reliable and unique way of doing this. So this is the result of it. Don't worry. You are going to have a look. What does it include? So that you will have a Fairly good idea. What does it include? Have a look at this table. The first column on the left hand side shows you the character position or the number position. In the center, it explains what do these numbers represent for or this letter represents. At the end is the example. Character position 1 to 5. In this example, 97700 is your center number. Remember, whenever you take your examination, you need to go to an examination center. It could be your school, it could be a private organization or a recognized examination center. That examination center has their own number. So in this case, it's 977700. The next uh, character 
in this number is an English letter B. If you were to take this examination at XLIAL in the UK, it would be zero. But for any international student, those who are taking outside UK, this is by default English letter B. So if you are an international student, your UCI number will have English letter B as the sixth character. Let's move to character number seven and eight. This represents your examination year, the year you first started doing this examination. In this example, it's the 2018. So they don't give you the entire year, the full fold digit number. Instead, they take the last two letters. If you were to do this examination in 2005, what would be your UCI number in this example? It would show as 05. Or if you were to do it in 2019, it would show as 19. Simple, right? Let's go to the next four characters. In this example, 1001. That is your candidate number. As you can see, it's a four digit number and used as your candidate number. I know most of the students, they get confused with the UCI number as well as the candidate number. Most of the students are not even aware of the existence of the UCI number and they don't realize how important it is. Therefore, don't get confused whenever you do your examination on your admission or in exams terms it would say statement of entry you will have these two numbers one is your candidate number and the other is your UCI number in addition to that you will also have your center number so in this example your center number is 97700 your candidate number is 1001 and the UCI number is this entire set of characters and the 13th letter and the last letter this is generated at random by the examination board this is done automatically by their system when uh, your center inputs data into your examination series the first 12 letters the 13th letter will be generated automatically and it will appear on your statement of entry and your result sheet subsequently. So I hope you now have a better idea of the UCI number. What does it include and what those numbers represent. Why it's so important? I'm sure you are wondering. There's a very good reason why exam board has taken such great pains in order to introduce the system. Let's go and have a look. Okay, here we are. Wondering why it's so important to have a UCI number and why we should use it over and over again whenever we do your Excel intentional levels. Here's my suggestion to you. That's right. Treat it like your savings account number. Let me give an example in a banking aspect. You go to your bank and tell them that you would like to deposit some money and open an account. What they will do is they will take your money and issue you with a unique account number. Remember, nobody will have your account number. That would be catastrophic, wouldn't it? So you go back to your bank at a later point and tell them that you would like to deposit some money. The banking assistant will ask whether you have an account with them, if so, whether you could give them your account number. Why? So that the money you are depositing now will be added to your previous money. If you had deposited 10,000 rupees previously and you are depositing 10,000 rupees now, at the end, 
you will have 20,000 rupees in your account. Why the bank deposited the money into your account? The UCI acts the same way. So the examination board has taken a banking method in order to help you complete your edX International levels. Let me put it in an exam world example. You go to an examination center in 2018, tell them that you want to do your business studies subject unit 1 and 2. This is your first attempt. So the exam center registers you and issue you with a UCI number and you do your examination. The following year, in 2019, you go back to your examination center and tell them that you want to do your business studies unit 3 and 4. So your examination center will ask whether you have completed your business studies unit 1 and 2 before. If so, whether you are carrying your UCI number. Why? Remember, just like in your banking example, when you did your examination in 2018, the exam board deposited or banked your results under that first UCI number. And now you go and deposit more units, more examinations into the same account. So when you do your unit 3 and 4 in business studies and produce your UCI number, the exam board will be able to bank your business studies unit 3 and 4 results into the same account where they have already banked your unit 1 and 2. Why it's so important? Because in Edexcel International A level, you are not given a certificate automatically. You need to ask for it. That asking process is called as cash in. So when you want to get your certificate for all the units you have done before, you go and cash in your results and get a certificate. So in this example, now that you have given your UCI number to the center when you were doing the examination for the second time, you have all your business studies results from unit 1 to 4 saved under one account number or in this case a UCI number. So when you want to get your certificate for the business studies you need to go and tell the examination center here is my uci number can i have my certificate for business studies does it make sense is it clear i really hope so because it's important for you to get your results banked under the same account number or uci number every time you do it most of the students, they don't do the examination in one sitting. They do it in multiple sittings. Okay, moving on, I would like to draw your attention to many other technical aspects of Edexcel IELTS. Remember, I won't be teaching you about subjects such as biology, chemistry, physics. These are mere technical terms which are as important as your syllabuses and specifications. Let's have a look at what those are. You have cash-ins. Remember I briefly explained what cash-in is. You get late cash-in, special cash-in, EAR or EOR and then ATS. So these are all related to the examination procedures, both pre and post examinations. Therefore, I'm planning on doing few other videos trying to explain these processes, these technical aspects, so that you are better prepared, not only in your subjects, but also in these areas so that it will be easier for you to get your results and certificates in the future. So I really hope 
this was of some use to you to better understand what UCI is, what it contained and its functionality. Hopefully, I'll be seeing you again with another video in the future. Until then, good luck with your examination. Take care and goodbye.